Welcome, everybody. Um, we are about to get started. Uh, my name is Mary Alcantara, and it's my privilege here to be here today as the moderator for the Bootstrapping and Connecting Ecosystems to Access Needed Resources Power Session. So I'd like to welcome everyone today. I hope you've been enjoying the forum so far. There's been lots of exciting discussions and knowledge being shared earlier today, and we're excited to continue uh, with this session right now. Um, so my panelists, my fellow panelists are here with me. Um, I think we have a couple, uh, maybe slight uh, camera issues, but we should, we should be okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started and just give a short introduction about the organization that I'm re representing today and uh, the topic itself. And then I've asked all of the panelists to do the same. So we're doing a little bit of a hybrid model here with some presentation and then some discussion afterwards. And I hope it will be good. So let me go ahead and get started. So uh, like I said, my name is Mary Alcantara. I'm representing uh, Input. It's a Hungarian government program. I'm serving there as accelerator in residence. So bringing my experience running different accelerator and incubator programs for startups over the past nearly decade. And at Input, we actually, the whole program is really based on this topic of bootstrapping and connecting to other ecosystems. So I was really excited to be asked to, to be here today. Um, we have five different pillars, pillars of activity that are really all around providing support to startups in the earliest stages of their life cycle when finances and time are really short. So the topic of bootstrapping, I think, is very near and dear to my heart. Um, and then alongside that, really expanding their access to other ecosystems. You know, Hungary is a small country. We have about 10, 10 million people. You have to think global from day one if you want to make it out there. So you got to always be thinking about how can you expand beyond the local ecosystem. And that's what we try to do. So we have um, yeah, five pillars of activity. Um, there's 19 different uh, counties in Hungary. So we have a nationwide coordinator network throughout those 19 regions. Um, we provide hands-on business development services to companies. Um, we have an international soft landing program, which I have a, a one slide about that I want to share with you. Um, we do uh, mentoring, pro bono mentoring for startups. So again, really focusing on making the best use of their resources and provide trainings and workshops all free to companies on topics that they need to get to the next level. Um, we have a database that we maintain of ideas and startups that's over a thousand now. Um, we have 16 different coordinators across the country. Uh, we have almost 70 mentors in our network, of which we have a certification program, which we've sent about half of them through. So we really take this topic very seriously. Um, we also have different subject matter experts on everything from business development, accounting, legal, sales, you name it. We have somebody who can cover that. Um, we organized uh, almost 300 events and trainings. We've had 5,000 participants at our events. Um, we've had several different business uh, consultations with over 400 companies, and we've taken over 200 startups to our international events. And then quickly, I wanted to just say a word about our Smart Landing program, which is our program that really focuses on the second part of our, today's panel, which is the uh, connecting ecosystems. So we have built up a network um, of partners, uh, experts, professionals, other government organizations, chambers of commerce, economic development groups in 12 different markets worldwide. Um, we're focusing mainly on Hungary moving to the, those countries, um, but we'd like to develop this program even further and have people from each of those markets interacting with each other as well. So we can imagine Finnish companies going to Poland or German companies to China and uh, this network will grow and be able to support all of those things. So if that sounds interesting to anybody and you'd like to join and learn more and you're from one of these target markets, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm on the swap card. You can find me there or on LinkedIn um, or I'm happy to, to chat at any time. Okay, that's a little bit of a, <laughs> a little bit of a blurb about input and, and myself. And now um, coming back to the topic. So yeah, we're talking about bootstrapping. We're talking about connecting ecosystems. And I, I mentioned I'd like to have my panelists um, introduce themselves a little bit and give their opening thoughts on, on these topics from the perspective of their ecosystem. So everyone has prepared a few words about that. And first up, I'd like to invite Valentina Stadnic um, to please introduce yourself and, and say a few words. And here's your slide, Valentina. 
Hi, everyone. Um, I was uh, thinking about this introduction and a while that one, I uh, remembered about a TED talk that I heard like a while ago when a guy was expanding on the multitude of introductions that we tend to make throughout our lifetime. And um, actually uh, what was interesting in that moment is that when you start your career, you tend to associate yourself with the work that you, you're doing at that particular moment of time. And uh, um, I'm from Moldova, I'm coming from Moldova, and um, um, I have tried on different kind of hats throughout my career. And uh, um, yes, I started in an NGO, then I worked for six years in the government. And then uh, right now I'm finding myself as part of the um, uh, support network organization. So basically it's been more than 10 years of work experience, which were totally different in their, in their way. But there was one common thing that I have faced throughout this career path is the wonderful people that guided me and that were kind of a mentors to me. So today I'm uh, really proud to be also an, uh, a mentor to the IT ecosystem uh, innovation challenge um, in the IT Innovation Challenge, and to actually mentor the ecosystem best practices for um, for ITU. So um, yeah, saying this, I uh, just wanted to uh, finalize my thought by uh, saying hi, everybody. I'm Valentina, and I'm passionate about the ecosystem building. If you do too, uh, please don't hesitate to connect with me. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Great. And you're in Moldova, you said. And is it the same time as in... Uh as in Hungary and in, in, in Geneva, <laughs> in ITU headquarters? Oh, it's one hour difference, but one that's not a later. big deal comparing okay. to the other speakers. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thanks Valentina. Okay, uh, next up we have Tomás Javor. Um, Tomás, please introduce yourself. You can let us know where you are and what time it is there. Hopefully it's not too brutal. I don't think so. <laughs> sure, uh, well, good morning everyone because I'm in New Haven, Connecticut. So I'm on the East Coast the East Coast uh, Eastern Standard Time Zone. So I think you are five hours ahead because you just switched over and we haven't yet. Um, as you can tell that by the difference between the live feed and my picture, I got a quarantine beard um, simply because I, I don't know, I just wanted to check a, a new look. But in terms of my background, I really am a finance guy by trade. So I worked as an investment manager in Hungary, managing money for institutional clients. And that was a highly rewarding career and job, especially right out of college. Um, it's such an honor to manage money for people. But what I realized is that I, I really have a desire for a global career. So I started thinking about like what I want to do next. And I realized that I wanted to move to the United States, you know, the center of the finance universe. So I, I was looking for scholarship opportunities and I got a full ride scholarship to do my MBA at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. So I moved to St. Louis in 2015 and I got a, an amazing education there. But while I, while I was in college, while I was doing my MBA, I met a successful entrepreneur who was an alum of the university and he returned because he really wanted to start an entrepreneurship uh, center on campus. And I knew that FinTech companies were eating my lunch at the time. So I really like jumped on the opportunity. I interviewed for the job and I got the position. So I was his number two. And the two of us started building this entrepreneurship center on campus, engaging with the ecosystem. <clears throat> and in three years, we built that uh, program up to more than 200 students in different courses. We had a corporate sponsor, we ran a corporate accelerator. We gave out tens of thousands of dollars in grants to students to start their businesses, be engaged with local startup companies to do advanced research, um, IP transfer, a bunch of exciting stuff, which was really cool do, to do all that in three years. And then in 2020, I joined Techstars to help Techstars build their higher ed program. So right now we are running a pilot program with the university here in Connecticut to figure out how we as Techstars can help them um, get more entrepreneurial. And in case you're not familiar with Techstars, Techstars is a, is a worldwide network that helps entrepreneurs succeed. And what we do is we have offices all around the world, you know, in different cities, and we have corporate partners as well. And what we do is we collect startup companies in, co in a cohort program, 10 at a time, 
in, in these different accelerator programs, we invest money, mentorship, and education into them. And throughout a three-month program, we have them accelerate their businesses uh, in exchange for a, a, a small percentage of their equity. And what I'm doing right now, I'm on the product team helping you know, the organization figure out if we can create more experiential learning opportunities for the students to become better skilled for the labor market. Because like 90 or 95% of the students, they will never start a business themselves, but they can learn useful skills while they're in college. But at the same time, some of these companies may, may get off the ground and they might apply for our accelerator program. And so thus we can create an early pipeline, which is really exciting. And the reason why I'm here is because I'm really passionate about uh, cross ecosystem collaboration. You know, like I moved around in my, in my life a couple of times and it's always nice to get plugged into the ecosystem uh, by welcoming people. So I wanna do the same. That's why I joined the Input Global Mentor Program. And, and I'm really excited to be here and talk to you about like how we can do this better and how we can be more intentional about helping startup companies access other markets outside of their country of origin. Great, that sounds amazing. Thanks for being with us, Tomasz. Okay, next up, I'd like to welcome Hubert Andrewski and uh, he has a few words he'd like to introduce us. And I, I noticed Hubert and Valentina are doing great with the backgrounds from, from ITU. I was trying to get it to work on mine, but I had, you know, it wasn't, I don't have a nice green screen, so it wasn't working out, but thanks Hubert for uh, following the template <laughs> and welcome. Thank you, thank you, always with pleasure. <clears throat> uh, hello guys, hello everybody. My name is Hubert Andrzejewski. Uh, thank you for invitation. Thank you for being here. So just in few words, uh, what could be interesting for the for you and for the audience? Uh, generally, I'm a serial entrepreneur with 20 year, years of experience working and living uh, in different parts of the globe. It was Emirates, it was US for a while, <clears throat> uh, doing business for the last 10 years, mostly internationally. Um, I established about 10 companies. I've got uh, successful exits uh, from about three of them, uh, 10X plus uh, COC. Um, what else? Uh, I generally focus on uh, fintech and medtech industry and climate change. These are the three, three industries that I'm focusing mostly. I have this privilege to um, receive the international awards just for example for best digital banking globally and best digital banking in c region um, <clears throat> i was managing vc i built and manage uh, axel point as accelerator we are managing 10 millions uh, almost 10 millions uh, usd in acceleration programs and we are investing we are accelerating and scaling projects from ce from whole Europe, but mostly from CE, uh, CE, pardon, CE region uh, on different markets. Uh, we are focusing mostly on Singapore for a few years, and we are cooperating with partners there, with government as well. We are providing a special uh, program dedicated for uh, uh, European uh, fintechs, uh, which we can scale in Singapore. Uh, we are international partner of uh, SFF. This is Singapore Fintech Festival. So this is the biggest uh, event uh, for fintechs globally. Um, <clears throat> Uh, what else? Uh, we are also incubating projects and right now at the moment I'm establishing my own VC because in my past life I was a managing partner in one of the VCs, but right now I'm uh, establishing my own VC with, of course, partners. Uh, it will be like 20 million USD uh, early stage fund for uh, investing to the European um, fintechs and scaling them on the Singapore, UK market, Canada and uh, Israel. These are our main focus. Uh, in the big, in the big uh, background, I've got product design. Uh, I had this privilege to establish a few uh, initiatives around UX and product design. So this is deeply in my heart. Uh, I was a Google um, a Google expert globally. Uh, I also received few awards, uh, and I established uh, one of the biggest UX studies in the region. 
uh, almost over 1000 uh, graduations um, on uh, product design studies. I'm also a lecturer for like 15 years and mentoring for like 15 years, but right now mostly moving myself to the, to the investment side and focusing on this, this one. Um, I think that's all. I, what could be interesting that I think that we are um, international co collaboration and building uh, products fit to the market. This is our main, main, main focus and this is the main focus of Axel Point and my VC. And what could be also interesting is that uh, <clears throat> I had this privilege to be in a different roles because from one perspective, I was a founder, I was uh, pitching, <laughs> I was receiving funds. Uh, I was also managing uh, the funds, uh, not mine, but the other people in the VC. So I was spending money. Uh, I was also in a role of partner in Deloitte Central Europe. So one of the most significant uh, uh, consultancy big four company uh, but also I'm uh, investing my own money for like eight years or something like that as an agent angel investor so I think those perspective is quite interesting because I've been on the other sides of the river so I would love to share, uh, share, share, share that thank you so much Great, welcome, and good luck to you with Axel Point. And I love how everybody is uh, sharing their advice already and open for connections. I think this is exactly the spirit of, of this discussion. So thank you. Okay, next up, we have Mike Kosuska from the city of Summerside. Uh, Mike, take it away. Awesome, thank you, Mary, and, and thank you, panelists. So Mike Tosuska, I'm Director of Economic Development for the city of Summerside, Prince Rhode Island, Canada, on the very east coast of Canada. Uh, I am by tradition an economic developer. I've been in the business for about 30 years. I've worked in various parts in Canada. And uh, one of the unique things about Summerside is uh, we're a small city uh, with sophisticated infrastructure um, that allows companies, in our opinion, um, to utilize our infrastructure to do test and validation. And, and last year we were lucky enough to win uh, an award for our living lab, which we created. So one of the things that we've tried to do as a, as a, as a community is, is to try and foster um, de-risking uh, entrepreneurs as they try and move into the North American market. Um, given the fact that we're a small community, um, and as I say, our infrastructure is as robust as, as Budapest, as Toronto, as Montreal, as San Jose, as New York City, um, what we, position ourselves as, as a community where we'll open up that infrastructure for collaboration. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. We've done about 15 projects in the last two and a half years, and, and we collaborate on everything from physical infrastructure to software development um, to anything related to innovation, I guess. Um, and one of the things about Summerside that is unique is we're, we're basically an export-based economy. Um, certainly we are known for a couple different uh, sectors. Um, one of the proud things that we are very proud of in Summerside is that 70% of our energy currently comes from renewable technologies. And we're seeing a lot of innovation being driven right now in the renewable technology platform. Um, the city just announced uh, this past past uh, winter, a $70 million solar battery project, which will drive our uh, renewable energy. And one of our, one of our comments that we like to say, if Airbus, Honeywell, and Samsung can do business in the city of Summerside, we're pretty much sure that any company can. And what we try and do is, is suggest to companies that if they're interested in trying to break into the North American market, maybe we could be that soft landing comfort zone for folks to help them grow their business. Um, and then IT and, and the marine sector, uh, aerospace, all uh, fairly big uh, industries in Summerside. So, so we're pretty proud of our little city. Uh, and the good news about Prince Edward Island is we're small enough that you can access decision makers quickly. Uh, we get to decisions very quickly. And uh, the fact that we're able to sit around what we call the big boy table in Canada, uh, being one of the provinces in Canada, allows us and affords us the opportunity um, to make different decisions quickly and, and effectively. So. That's, that's kind of in a nutshell. And I know we're gonna talk a little bit later, but we're one of the things we talk about under our living lab is um, 
although I work for a government organization, we think like business. And we understand the challenges that businesses face. Um, we understand that, you know, the, what we're trying to do is reduce as many barriers as we can. So there is that collaboration that takes place. Um, and there's a sharing of knowledge, which is very important to us. And what we try and do is shorten investors time to market. And if we can do that through um, applying, you know, skills or infrastructure or whatever the case might be, or even for that matter, networking. Um, luckily, as, as another role I, I hold is I'm a past president of the Economic Developers Association of Canada, a 500 member strong organization across the nation. So that affords me the opportunity to connect different people with uh, different resources throughout the country, uh, as well as I, I do that in the States. Um, so, and I think uh, I might have one little more slide there, Mary, and we'll, I'll, we'll wrap it up. So one of the things that we're pretty yeah, excited. Let me know. Yeah, one of the things we are really excited about is, is our partnership with Input Hungary. Um, and the thing that we're working on right now is uh, creating a new accelerator and we're calling it the exchange. Um, and one of the things that we think is going to be unique about it is is our ability with a technology rich uh, environment and with our coupled with our living lab program, bringing key collaborators, key players together to, to, to drive, I'll call it real life workshop experience in the community. And so we're pretty excited about that. So with that, Mary, maybe I'll just stop there and let some of the other panelists have a discussion. That okay, just, yeah, I tried to keep up with your slides yeah. while you were going. <laughs> yeah, but. That's okay. <laughs> So that's yeah. just give, that, for the audience, that just gives you a sense of uh, one of the things we did early on in Summerside is try to understand the power of our infrastructure and what it meant to business. And so basically you can see we own our own wind farm, we own our own solar farm, we own our pollution control facility, roads, water, sewer, you name it, we own it. Why not open it up to companies to try and you know do some validation and help them grow their business? Great. And actually, you just finished right in time. So there was about 10 seconds left. So perfect. Awesome. <laughs> and I didn't even practice. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, natural. Um, all right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mike. We're looking forward to having you in the panel. Um, okay. And here's Mike's contact information. So you can spam him as much as you want. Uh, okay. Last but not least, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Laila Alhadrami. And she's going to tell you a little bit about her ecosystem project. So Laila, please, the floor is yours. Hi, Mary and everyone. And it's still my pleasure to join everyone uh, today in this session. And, and just let uh, me know when is... you want me to go to the next slide. Sorry, I forgot to mention right, that. Okay. So just say okay. next my slide is, so I can do it. Uh, all right. My name is uh, Leila Al Hadrami, and I am from Oman. And I hope that all of you know where is Oman. In case you don't know it, open Google Maps so you can know it. And it can be the next uh, visit for all of you after COVID 19. Um, sure. <laughs> My story, uh, I would like to start with a story so I can uh, introduce myself more about it. I, my love of story is starting with community of practice when I did my master uh, in online learning. <clears throat> and community of practice, one of, one of the courses in my master. And I was always fascinated by community of practice because you know, I found it's very interesting because you can build a smart ecosystem during these uh, community of practice. And I always dreamed to be a part of community of practice. So when I finished my master's degree, I was dreaming to join uh, Information Technology Authority, which is, you know, the official authority in Oman that is responsible about the automation of the e-services in Oman. So, and it has the vision of e-Oman, which is, you know, the electronic Oman. And luckily I joined uh, the digital transformation team in 2012, and we started the journey. And uh, when it comes to the building capacity, capacity, we all have one pain. You invest a lot on the, uh, you know, uh, different employees and so on. But what happened later on? Everyone returned back to their office and the knowledge vanished. They say, hey, we invested in you. What happened? And they said, we cannot convince our management. So they can't let us uh, work in our projects and so on. And I felt really sorry because we are investing a lot of our money. In 2016, all the world got collapsed financially. And most of the building capacity programs, you know, postponed, or we don't have any more building capacity like the, the way we use it uh, in the luxury time. So we can travel a lot, have more speakers to train us and so on. And then we thought about it. Should we stop the building capacity? And the building capacity, you know, is the most powerful weapon. If you want to empower any sector, you have to invest in your people. And that is how South Korea, they succeed 
because they used to suffer from the wars and everything. And when they become one of the leading countries in technology, one question was asked to them, how have you succeed? And they say, we invested in our people. So we come back again to the same thing. How can we make the building capacity sustainable and we don't have money? And from there, the idea came of the smart city ambassadors. So we can start to the next, uh, yes. So smart city ambassadors started in 2017. It started as a small program. Can you go back to Oman? Because uh, it is from there, so I can show it to you. When we started, you know, the idea, uh, we are based on Muscat, and Muscat, it is in the north of the map. So you can see the map of Oman. It has like a long coast. That's why I'm also encouraging you to visit Oman. And it was really challenging. How can we reach the rest of the cities in Oman? So we thought about it. We are in Muscat. How can we go to the south of Oman? And if you want to drive from Muscat to the south of Oman, you have to drive more than 10 hours. So you can see the efforts and the money and so on. Then we decided to launch our smart city in Pasadena, which is based on a community of practice. So we can move to the next slide. So that, uh, so from there, the you know, vision came. How can we have ambassadors who can be the core of this uh, program, who can be, uh, you know, uh, help us to spread the knowledge area when it comes to smart cities? Because we want to empower all the cities around Oman, not just in Muscat because we care about the others. So that's why we have launched this program. It was really challenging to start because not everyone believed on the idea. They said, how you are going to succeed and what the role of these ambassadors will be. So let us go to the next so we can show you how we really started. So the objective of our you know, ambassador, it was to create a database of expert ambassadors in Oman. Because what happened, it is this pain, it is not just in Oman, it's in every country. You finish your school, your master's degree, but nobody know about you. You just finish your school or your college and then go back to your office or go back to your room and hang your certificate on the wall, right? I'm sure everyone have this issue. So we decided that we should empower, we should search for all of these people. And if you are going to speak about emerging technologies, do we have expert people in Oman? And luckily we were shocked by ourselves that we found some people who are you know, already specialized in blockchain, IoT and AI, that really was shocked for me and for all the team. So imagine the database that we started creating uh, with my team and big salute to my team because we are uh, four uh, dedicated team uh, working the executive team of smart city platform and we are not you know we are, are just uh, working as a part-time but even though we have worked successfully with this program and also uh, when we started creating the database of our ambassadors the other entities they started coming back to us they said we need a help please do you have somebody who's expert in iot so he can, for example, deliver a session to our employees. Yes, we do have. So we just go back to our database and share it with them. And then next, okay, let me go to the next one. Yeah, I'm sorry and to then, interrupt. We're uh, we're about almost out of time for you, but let's let, if you want to finish up in the okay, next 30 yes. seconds and or so. And have okay. like different categories. If you want to think about a smart ecosystem, you have to think about the different stakeholders in your ecosystem. So we have the individuals, the academics, the business partners, the financial sector, and so on. So this type of uh, ecosystem, you can implement it anywhere in any organization, and it is zero cost. So uh, if anyone wants to know more of this, we'll be really happy because you know our smart ambassadors can be involved in knowledge cafes, online activities, can work as consultants and so on. That's all. And these are our ambassadors that shared with us, you know, uh, sharing the knowledge we have in the blockchain and we have also ambassadors in IoT and big data. And those are all our success factor. And thank you all. <laughs> Great, thank you so much. Okay, so now that we went through and had a round of introductions, um, I'd like to, to have, I have some questions for, for you panelists. Um, so starting with uh, Valentina. So you are a previous challenge winner. Um, 
and you've been through the ITU uh, mentoring program and, and you're a past winner representing the ecosystem. So I'd like to ask you about specifically the topic of mentoring and how does how is mentoring helpful for bootstrapping and for connecting ecosystems? Thanks for the question. I indeed had a chance to see this community evolving like a while already uh, for several years. Uh, my first experience started um, a while ago when I was working for the government. And back then I had a chance to familiarize myself with the concept of the ecosystem while being part of the um, country ecosystem review. And uh, that it exactly uh, brought me to the idea how complex all of our ecosystems are and uh, the complexity of the interactions that we need to take in account when we kind of look at, um, at the ground base of our work. Afterwards, as you mentioned, I represented the um, one of the organizations, actually the Moldavati Park, which was uh, awarded as a best ecosystem practice last year. And uh, it was a totally different experience with the community where I was exposed to the international um, as, uh, colleagues and partners, which were also the winners. And uh, uh, they brought a different perspective to the complexity that I was already aware of. And it was a great um, amount of interaction with like-minded people. But this year, I have seen a totally different experience from the perspective of the mentoring program that was implemented by the ITU. It was uh, um, a different kind of support put in place by the ITU team to actually um, give an understanding to the current winners of these complexity that we were exposed previously, and as well to connect uh, the current winners with the, co the community itself, um, with the global community, I would say. So uh, um, I have managed to see uh, the uh, great amount of interactions that were happening uh, between the current winners, the last year winners, the mentors, and uh, the community was helping itself and people were helping each other to uh, expand their ideas, to improve uh, uh, their concepts, to grow in their own ecosystem and to connect those ecosystems. And this is a way that basically, yeah, the ecosystems can connect and it maybe can also save startups resources, right, by having the, being part of a network like this. Great. Um, so let's hear from another one of our challenge winners. So Mike, turning, turning the questions to you. Um, so how would you say that um, being, being connected to this global community of innovators has helped um, for Summerside Exchange? Thank you for the question, Mary. Um, being part of this network has allowed us to become smarter. I'm just going to plain and simple. You know, we, we think we have all the answers for sure. Um, but in essence, uh, learning from not only this event, but learning from these panelists that being part of this network helps to validate ideas, helps to seek out different options, helps to seek out different ways to do things. Um, find out what works, what doesn't work, um, and learn from the experiences. So from Summerside's perspective and, and from my perspective participating, just being part of this global network has been really powerful and empowering for me in terms of trying to move our community forward. And can you share a little bit about how um, being recognized in this community has helped you develop the living lab concept even further? Yeah, I, I think twofold. Being a small city, we often all call it have a confidence issue at times. Um, and, and winning this award and being part of this ecosystem has has allowed us to kind of say, yeah, we're on the right track. And it and has helped us to, to attract different clients and companies that want to participate with us. So, so instant validation for us in terms of the things that we are doing, which has been hugely significant in trying to move things forward. And uh, you know the accelerator that we're launching here shortly is uh, just another example of how we've taken best practices from around the globe and embedded them into our ecosystem and, and built different things around that ecosystem to help further launch companies is what we're doing now. So it's pretty exciting. Great, I love it. So speaking of another award-winning program, so talking about tech stars, Tomas, maybe you can share with us a little bit about how does Techstars help its portfolio companies access different ecosystems and resources? Yeah, um, well, thank you for the question, Mary. Um, like 
there are many, many different ways, you know, we have our portfolio companies. So obviously we have the local teams, you know, our managing uh, directors and program managers in different cities. And obviously they are well connected in the ecosystem, but also as, a, as tech stars, you know, we, we talk to different service providers, you know, like how they can provide like free or discounted rate on cloud credits and, and different services. And we also have a really vast subject matter expert mentor bench who will actually come in and, and provide pro bono services for our portfolio um, companies. So that's the, those are the obvious benefits. But at the same time, when you become part of the Techstars network, you know, if you're a portfolio company and you join or you are an employee and you join, you get invited to an internal, like invite only basically social media network. Um, so you can network with former founders, you know, like investors, former uh, employees of Techstars. So it's a really cool and vibrant curated community. And that can be like, tremendously helpful, you know, especially if you want to look for like a warm intro or, or someone who has walked the walk and, 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 and has experienced similar things that you are going through right now, you know, like now they are in a late, later stage founder. And at the same time, the awesome thing about like working for Techstars is that it's a globally distributed team and it always has been. So we really embraced, you know, this remote concept and, and the internal culture is really open. So we have an internal Slack channel and I can just hit anyone up from around the globe and, and they are extremely responsive, they are extremely open. So even if it's on an informal level, you know, like you wanna just help out, you know, a portfolio company or a student, or you wanna bring in a speaker or you need a panelist, like people are just extremely ready to say yes. And, and I think that, that has been enormously helpful for, for everyone involved. Great, yeah, I, I love the idea of having multiple channels and ways for people to, to reach out to each other. So you have, you're kind of part of this umbrella group, but you have this global Slack, Slack channel too for people to, to reach out to each other. That's really interesting. Um, so, so Lila, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about your smart ambassadors because you're also building kind of a network and a community of people to help each other. So what are some of the elements of your program that make it unique and sustainable um, as an innovation uh, ecosystem? Okay, thanks Mary for the question. And uh, actually what really make uh, our smart ecosystem sustainable that we are having a volunteer ambassadors. And you know, uh, that is you know what make it really sustainable because we are trying to get the help from the ambassadors who are experts in these technologies from the society itself. We started first, you know, at a small uh, portion of ambassadors who joining the smart city. And some of them, you know, at the beginning, it was really difficult to convince them. Some of the people were really excited, but some of the people who, who are highly, you know, uh, specialized in these, they told us, are you going to pay us? And said, no, sorry, we don't have money, but we are going to market for you. Because some of them, it was like a passion for them to speak about these technologies, but they are not working. So when they joined us, it was a, a good marketing for them because, you know, they started because they shared their success story. They started to be asked by different organizations so they can, you know, uh, speak about their uh, experience and deliver also uh, awareness session and so on. And such ecosystem can be used in any sector. And that's what I feel that make it really sustainable. And because, you know, you can empower different people who are really interested in that sector to be uh, your community of practice, and they are going to empower it by yourself. All what we need to do is just to have our social media and human resource so they can manage that ecosystem. Great. Yeah, I, I, you're speaking to the choir about it, how sometimes it can be tough to get people to sign up, but I love how you kind of shifted the focus and thinking about, okay, yeah. what's the value that you can offer to your community members as well? And I think that's, that's really great. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Huber, turning, turning to you for a moment. Um, I almost hesitate to bring up this topic, but I guess we would be, be remiss to not mention good old COVID <laughs> today as well. So how do you see that you, you have a lot of different investment activities? How do you see that? I mean, I see there's clear parallels between the concept of bootstrapping during these times. A lot of companies, a lot of sectors were hit really hard. But what are your thoughts on, on COVID? How's that impacted investing in, in your regions and, and kind of, you know, 
how, how does that relate to, to the, the panel discussion today from your side? Thank you for the question, Mary. <clears throat> um, you know, it always depends on which angle are we are we uh, looking on a topic, because from one hand, if you would like to see what's going on in Poland, I'm ex right now I'm I'm uh, I'm staying in Warsaw, uh, capital city of, of, of Poland. So, for example, in Poland, we've got the uh, biggest numbers of the investments uh, historically. Uh, but of course, it's uh, still it's correlated with some kind of a government support and union support. So it's not uh, just uh, uh, it's strictly connected with those elements. But on the uh, on the end of the day, uh, most projects, most uh, valuable and legit and interesting projects. Uh, have have access to uh, to fundraising and it's not a big issue to to find a especially early stage uh, press it or a seat uh, investment ticket it depends on the occasion it depends on the situation but let's assume that the average average ticket on this on this stage is something around uh, 1 million usd or 1 million euro so it's doable and it's not a huge problem if we will, uh, if we want to see it as a uh, Europe, Europe uh, issue or a Europe topic, uh, as I know, it's uh, more difficult because most of the VCs, and I also heard the same with from uh, the side of our partners uh, from abroad, especially from other parts of the globe. Uh, in most cases, VCs funds uh, are investing, but they are um, they are curious uh, how looks the business model and how it's going to look like after the COVID. So they are preparing. First of all, they are uh, they are tra 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 trying to cover uh, the investments in the portfolio because in many cases you need to support them and you need to spend more money on those investments and they are already in your family. So first of all, the first rule is to cover your investments which you already made. So this is point, first point. The second point is that uh, VCs and, and other, um, other um, organizations who are investing or the angels, they are investing, but they are looking on the market and they are uh, trying to find, first of all, a good opportunity and good moment. So that decreased number of investments a bit. But from the second point of view, uh thinking or from the other angle which i think is very interesting uh investors are looking for the interesting business models which could be uh uh which could look promising after the COVID, because COVID is changing the situation of course all of us are uh, hearing all of the information and scanning the markets and so on and so on but i think that we can agree that the uh, the, the market, the industries, and the business models are changing in most of the industries. So there will be something new after the COVID, or right now it's something new, and there will be something new after, after I don't know, one year, two, two years, three years. So generally, as I can hear, and we got the same uh, point of looking on that, that we are thinking which business models will, will be the best one after the pandemia uh, phase. So I think it's very interesting uh, to see what's going on. But uh, to sum up, uh, there are investments. There is a possibility to grab an investment ticket, but I think it's, uh, it's, it, it's tougher. It's not so easy as it was before, but it's doable. It depends on, this, on the market. It depends on the country. It depends on the situation, of course. And Poland is leading the way, I guess, right? I, I've also heard this, that Polish VCs are still very active in this time period. So that's great. <laughs> All right, well, we are going to switch gears now and take some questions from the audience. Um, so the first question we have, I guess is for me, uh, what are the biggest challenges for the Hungarian ecosystem? So I would just say quickly, um, first of all, it's, it's always hard. You know, everybody has a different, you know, idea of what are the biggest challenges. But I think for us, it's, it's really kind of around two things. 
Uh, one is around um, business development knowledge and know-how. So this is a topic that's just now starting to be, be taught in universities, very rarely in high school. Um, I think technically we're very strong, but we need to learn how to sell and market ourselves a little bit better. And the second challenge is really around uh, international access. And that's really, that really is one of the biggest challenges that we are specifically trying to address with inputs and with the smart landing program and with partners like many of my, my friends and fellow panelists here. Um, the next question is uh, for Hubert. Um, what interests you in the European startup environment? Um, how different or connected is it to the other markets that you're a part of? Thank you for this one. So, <clears throat> uh, generally, from the I, I, maybe I will put it that way. Uh, my whole life gave me this uh, this this uh, lesson that it's good to be focused on something. It's hard to be alpha and omega on everything, and just maybe focus on the Poland example. Uh, there are many cases, I, I love my competitors, but there are many cases where, uh, for example, accelerators or the VCs, I want to focus mostly on the accelerators, are, um, are doing uh, or covering every industry and every part of technology because we can accelerate everything and we've got methodology to do that. In my opinion, that's not enough. In my opinion, you need to have the skin in the game. You need to have the industry focus experts and you need to have your expertise in such industry as well if you want to provide those projects effectively because it's not about the acceleration. Acceleration is the step one. The press-it phase is a step one. To make the MVP and to make the POC and to test something, this is, this is just the entrance to the game. Uh, we would, as accelerator, we, we used to think and we used to work in such a way that we, uh, we have a success when somebody is signing the commercial contract after our acceleration. So these are our KPIs, these are our metrics, and it's very hard to do so if you are not focused on specific industry. Just to give you the highlights, we, for example, we are focusing on three industries mostly, uh, and uh, for example, in fintechs, uh, in one of our acceleration programs, half, 50% of the uh, accelerators which enter the program, uh, on the end of the day, they go out with a commercial agreement with an international corporation. To do so, the average, the average statistic, the average KPI, the average performance is like 20% in the region. So 50, it's super, super nice. And we are very proud of that, but it's not happening but themselves. I mean, you need to be engaged. You need to have a skin in the game and so on and so on. So we know about fintechs. We've been driving and managing the fintech companies. So that's helping us to help the founders. So I think this is the first point. The second one is that we strongly believe that CE region, uh, not only Poland, because we are not focusing only on Poland, we are focused on Europe, but mostly on CE region, it's very promising. Uh, probably most of us know the statistics about the unicorns, about the uh, scientists in the region, about the students in the region, about the founders and so on and so on. So generally, this is the region with huge potential, technological one, because we've got the, one of the best techno technical people globally. Uh, Poland is number three, but there are Czech Republic as well, Slovakian, and so on and so on. These are very smart people, and we've got also very interesting scientists. In most cases, uh, in the past life, in the past years, there was a problem with financing. Maybe not even with the money, but how to, how to manage the money. So how to how to invest in a smart way. How to prepare the next rounds. How uh, how this relationship between investors and the startups should work because the C region was and Poland included uh, haven't uh, got a huge uh, experience in doing that. We our VC market is like fifteen years old or something like that. So there was, uh, we need some time. So that's the reason why we are focusing on 
building projects here from day one with founders open-minded and hungry for the international business and we are doing that with, in the partnership with singapore tel aviv london and we focus on those free hubs it's not a um, uh, it, we thought about this for a long long time and we choose those free hubs uh, because they are most interesting for us and from day one, we tried not only to focus on the product, not only focus to, on the MVP, but also on the scaling projects from the region on those markets. So to build the bridges, so to uh, help with uh, next rounds and so on and so on, to scale up, to help people to scale up. And I think it's working quite well. So if somebody is asking on which industry, I mentioned free, and we are focusing on uh, scaling projects on those free market, market which I mentioned. But of course, it's not a closed catalog. We've got uh, very uh, interesting links also in Canada, in US. Uh, it will be great to collaborate with colleagues from <laughs> in this panel, of course, uh, too. But uh, but everybody are saying that they are going to the US. They are going on the big market of United States and so on and so on. In some cases, this is a great idea. But for some cases, for example, Asia and Singapore, which is the entrance to Asia, uh, uh, could be more valuable. In some cases, collaboration with, for example, Nordics or a German market, it will be better. So it depends on the case. Great. Um, OK, we have time, I think, for just one last question. It's for Lila. Um, question is, if you have a list with all of the ambassadors in your program online where we can take a look. Sorry, can you say it again? Yes, sorry. Uh, yeah, if you have a list of your all of the ambassadors in your program ah, yes. online. Okay. Do you have a website, <laughs> basically? Yes, we do. We do have a website. Yes, uh, you can join us. Uh, we'd like to see the picture or just uh, share with you the name of our website. Yeah, that's fine. The name, I think, would be good. Yes, because you can find uh, all our ambassadors in smartoman.om. And luckily, we are not just having now just ambassador from Oman. We started going global, which you know proved that uh, our uh, initiative, our smart ecosystem, is becoming more successful. And uh, Alhamdulillah. And now we are also going to have a new initiative, which is part of Smart uh, Ambassador Initiative. We have basically three initiatives. Uh, the coming uh, initiative is will be on November. It's about smart cities around the world. So we are going to invite a successful uh, story about the smart city from different cities around the world. And we are going to start from Oman and the next will be Sudan and then Qatar and so on. So we are going to have more projects to be shared so we can spot the light on it. So, the, so it will be like you know, a great opportunity for everyone from the global so they can listen to different stories so we can you know expand uh, the network and also exchange the experience in these uh, different sessions. And another uh, initiative it will be on December. It's also dedicated for our ambassadors. We call it Smart Ambassadors Cafe. So it will be like a cafe. Our ambassadors will they will have like two sessions for every month. For every month, our ambassadors themselves they are going to you know invite uh, some successful stories, whether it is with technology or they have like a small business in technology and so on or in smart cities. The ambassadors themselves, they are going to lead this uh, initiative. And we have also another initiative. So I'm speaking about three different initiatives. The third one, it will be about the smart initiatives in Oman. Because what happened, we always heard about the new technologies, the new uh, initiatives and so on. But we don't have a centralized place for all of these initiatives. So we are going to start first from Oman perspective, then we are going for the global because we are also going to document the projects which are in the smart cities around the world. Because, you know, whenever you come uh, to a, a new project, you feel excited to know more about it. So we can, you know, get the experience, whether it is the, from the financial sector, the challenges and so on. All of these will be documented in our uh, smartuman.om. And we hope that we are going to be like a global uh, smart ecosystem that can be adapted by different organizations 
because we believe so much in the success of this smart ecosystem and we love to share it with everyone so they can be empowered and successful in their organization. That's all what I can share about our uh, smart uh, ambassadors program and thanks Mary and everyone for this session. Great, thank you. So I guess that was your closing thoughts. Um, so I'd like to give everybody the chance to share their little 30 second kind of final statement about the topic. So thank you, Lila. Um, Hubert, let's go, let's go next with you. Sure. Um, so keep it quick. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Um, I need to collect my thoughts. Uh, so I think that maybe one one thing to put on the table, uh, because generally I've got a product in my in my heart. So uh, product from my perspective, and and uh, uh, and the value for the users, of course, is and the customers is of course uh, most important thing. But I think that from the perspective of the accelerator, uh, I would like to address one thing or put it on the table it i think it's very crucial to build the business models uh in our region it's not such a popular thing because it's very difficult and it needs an engagement from the partner side for example if you have a program because there are different programs in the accelerators but if you cooperate with the with the corporations we are doing such thing of course you need to engage and invite managers on in some cases even a board of a bank to 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 accept such a, such a business model or to feedback such a business model but i think it's a one of the crucial things because you can build something you can scale up something but on the end of the game on the on the end of the day you need to uh, have a business model how you want to cooperate with the partner and those business models are changing all the time and the corporate so keep the product in the in the center and focus on the business model i like yeah, it so <laughs> yeah so i i want to encourage everybody to uh try to build as much as we can business models with our startups with our in in, in uh, investments because it's very valuable especially for them great and it's not an easy way to do that. all right thank you valentina final thoughts well, from the mentorship perspective, I would like to say that mentorship is really uh, key for both trapping the ecosystem and that uh, we have discussed a lot of uh, uh, different kind of investments. So I really see this uh, mentorship as um, the kind of a first level of investment that you can do in order to uh, give the access to different kind of uh, resources and knowledge. And uh, this is exactly what happened in the uh, ITU uh, challenge when uh, the winners have received an access to the resources that they might not even uh, have heard of. And uh, when it comes to mentorship, I guess my last thought would be uh, that mentorship is for everybody. And uh, I guess that's uh, a global thing. And uh, there is such an untapped huge resources in, uh, in terms of the um, in already existing best practices like the Input International Mentorship Program. Uh, there uh, is a huge potential of replicating them. And there is uh, also great potential to um, uh, to tap into the diaspora in order to uh, also uh, boost your mentorship programs at the national level. So that would be it, I guess. <laughs> great. I love that. Mentoring is the first form of investment. I like that. That's great. Thank you. Uh, Tomas, closing thoughts from your side. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much. So I'm going to be short and sweet. Uh, what I think is that there has never been a better time to be an entrepreneur with all these changes going on in the world. So I want to applaud ITU um, for inviting us to talk about the right problems in the bootstrapping and connecting resources to help elevate all boats. So thank you so much for inviting us. Great, thank you. All right, and Mike, take us home. Awesome, thanks, Mary. And I, I echo uh, Thomas's comment as about ITU um, allowing us to, to get together here. But what we're trying to do is we, we, we think we understand the barriers that entrepreneurs face. And uh, what we're trying to do is de-risk their access to market. And Hubert mentions the US, it's, it is a complicated market. And, and maybe look at Canada as that opportunity in our free trade agreements to access those. And certainly with challenging times with COVID and, and, and market movements, um, we're doing our best to create that ecosystem for success. 
And, and just closing, um, you know, we like to take a hands-on approach with a tailored focus on, on who the customer is to ensure their success. And we believe we're a small city to get things done, but big enough to get your first North American validation. So awesome. And I really appreciate being part of this panel. Great, thank you so much. Thank you so much to all of our panelists today. I think one of the common themes that everybody touched on a little bit was this idea of, you know, do it for free and pay it forward. And I think, um, you know, you can tell from the, the people here, everybody's super passionate about what they're doing. And I think it all starts with sharing our experiences and boosting our own, our ecosystems and bringing in the best from around the world. So I hope everybody got a few ideas from this session today. Thank you so much for your time. Um, that's it. We have uh, the next uh, session coming up is a networking session at in about 25 minutes from now. So if you can stick around, we'd love to have you. Um, and otherwise, see you tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Bye.